holding the line. Ever since he gave up trying to dislodge the stubborn boulder from his northmost field, Caleb has been deaf on any rock he spots, fist size or more, stopping his plow to grab and fling it into the pond. He's seen what's like to happen if you let them grow. <laughs> Local hero. My stepson's Mitsubishi waits. A fine car, economical to operate, purchased from him by his mother on the eve of his departure for the Peace Corps so that I could drive it to work on hot or rainy days like these or bitter cold ones. That was kind of her. He spent his last three years on peace in peace, teaching English, which required he first learn Russian and Ukrainian. In leisure time, he has grown vegetables, shared meals with neighbors, made many friends, and looked for small or larger ways to make a difference in their lives. He's taught them dental hygiene, warned them of the lies that evil men will tell young girls, and beautified the little town they shared with him, where our obscenely rich and sometimes apathetic nation is regarded now with more affection than it was three years ago, and where he will be missed. Perhaps his car has missed him too. I have yet to drive it, especially even on, especially on those days when our mild climate lapsed into unpleasantness. If he can walk or hitchhike five kilometers to greet me from an internet cafe in temperatures far lower than have ever touched my pampered western skin, I can, in the name of peace, endure a little sweat or cold or inconvenience. And one more, this one, a fixed form. Um, anybody ever written a Sestina? <laughs> Man has, okay. You have two? Okay. This is called Insomnia. <coughs> Merlot may soothe my fevered mind in these pale hours while sleep eludes me as I write to ward off that perversity of fears that frolic, mocking my stern, stoic mane. Where human when human friends have trundled off to rest, they press and crowd companionably around to toast my health, suggest another round, and laugh when I demur. But surely these are subjects suitable as all the rest of my experience. I ought to write of them as well, I know, but I remain reluctant, as if something in me fears to ponder them, have they become more fierce now than they were before? I turn around to study in the glass a troubled mane that might be mine if it were not for these deep furrows, hollow eyes. Can this be right? I want more wine, though what I need is rest. I slump back in my seat. Before me rest my pad and pen, mild anodyne to fears these simple touchstones. Every day I write some pages, read some more, and make the round of colleagues, kinfolk, friends. No one of these is wont to shake the peace of my domain, nor will they comment on my thinning mane, slow steps that pause more frequently for rest, yet all their eyes bear tacit witness. These accruing decrements are not the fears that haunt me, though, but doubt. Will this next round of banal tasks and niggling wrongs to write exceed the strength I bring to it? I write with growing urgency, for still the main insights of my career are just around the path's next turn, and if my pen should rest, may be forgotten. Bless the kindly fears that share my coffee in the dawn. With these old friends to goad me on, I'll write the rest of this my thesis. In the final round, an old man's fears befit an old man's mane.